Hey guys, back with another video. This is another knife I made in my continuing pursuit of knife making. I'm quite pleased with this one. This one came out really nice. It's going to be a gift for someone. I made a little paper case for it as well. But uh, the knife itself is made from an old machete, um, reclaimed the metal. Uh, it's high carbon steel, obviously. It's a single bevel grind, so it's a right-handed knife. It's got a chisel grind, I did a little etching here of a logo, uh, bacote, bacote and maple handle. Yeah, so this one came out really nice. It's razor sharp, <sighs> holds an edge beautifully. I left the mill scale on it so for protection, and it looks kind of cool except for along the edge here, but over time with use because it's a high carbon knife um, the more you use it, the more you wipe it, the more it'll build up a protective patina of I believe magnetite. So yeah, I'm quite pleased with how well this knife came out so uh, I think it'll make a great gift. I, uh, I did mess up, uh, I have done uh, a larger knife but then I realized that it wasn't really happy with the grind so then I fixed it and then started over and then made another one, another blade. So this one here um, is, you'll see it in the video if you watch the rest of this video. Just uh, just where I made some mistakes and then how I corrected them and just kind of kept at it until I got something I liked. All right, I'm gonna to try to make another knife. I already made one and it came out pretty good, but I wasn't too happy with the finish. This one here, uh, from what I've learned, hopefully I can uh, learn from my mistakes. So I cut this blank out of a machete. That used to be a machete, there was a handle on this side. But I have enough metal out of this machete for probably two kitchen knives. So I've already traced out my template that I kind of made up myself that I'm kind of happy with. So it was a cardboard template I sketched out, traced it, cut the, the blank out of the machete. Now I'm going to, and I ground it all out uh, so it's got an, it's a clean profile. Going to heat treat it and then I'm going to do the grinding. Last time I ground it nice and thin and then heat treated it. Uh, it worked fine. I had minimum warpage but from the, some of the videos I've watched, when grinding really thin stock like this, typically they heat treat it and then they do the, the grinding so they don't uh, so you don't get any weird warpage because uh, on a thin material like this, when you heat treat, it could warp. So I'm gonna heat treat it, then I'm gonna I'm gonna go grind that this. So here's the knife after hardening. I've washed it off, I've washed the oil off, it's cooled off now. I got a little bit of warpage, but I'll straighten that after I temper it. So next I'm just going to stick it in the oven at 375, maybe 400. I'll probably do 375 this time, make the edge a little harder and um, temper it down to, to 375 or so. Right now it's a little too hard. But uh, the way I know it did harden successfully is by taking a file and rubbing it on it and it just skates over it. Normally, like up here, it digs in. See, you can hear the difference. We're here, it's digging in. So that's how I know that this is hardened properly. The other way you can, when you're hardening, I was doing it out in, outside where it was a little brighter. Um, I didn't use a magnet, but you can, because this metal was so thin, I didn't bother. I knew I could get it up to critical temperature and without overheating it is once you get it up to the temperature you think that's critical just stick a magnet on it and if the magnet doesn't stick you can um, plunge it into your oil and I used uh, oil to harden it instead of water just because 
oil is just a little bit less of a shock but uh, depending on the type of metal you could use water but uh, I'm not in I'm not too familiar with that so uh, with water quenching uh, metals but water does create a tremendous amount of stress typically uh, depending on I guess on the metal so anyways in this application I used uh, vegetable oil All right, so I got the blade tempered in the oven, let it cool, and there's a bit of a kink in it, a little bit of warpage when I um, when I hardened it, just around here. But uh, if you have an issue with the blade or anything and you need to straighten it, what I've done is I took my mini grinder and I have one of these fl uh, sanding flap disks. But if you have like a flap disk for a drill or something, you could use one of those, a sanding disk. And I sanded in a concave into the piece of wood here, ground it out, and then now I can straighten this by just placing it and just gently tapping with a dead blow hammer or a hammer of some sort. But you don't want anything too too hard because you uh, you want to distribute the the force a bit. I think that's looking pretty good. That's looking pretty good there. I don't know if it'll show up on the camera there because it's so thin. But anyways, I got it straight now. I'm pretty happy with that. Not too much wobble on it. No flats. Yeah, that's 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 pretty good. So next is I'm gonna start grinding away. Since I'm going to be grinding this hardened, already heat treated, I got to be sure to not overheat the edge. So I'm going to, I have some water over here that I'll dunk the blade occasionally to keep it cool so it doesn't overheat. Starting to get my first bevel on this. It's not looking too bad. I'm gonna work my way until I get fairly close to an edge because this is just a chisel grind. So I'm gonna take it all the way to the other side. And then I'm gonna step my way up. I'll do this first grind and then I'll work my way up, work my way up, and then I'll grind the whole thing flat. So I got the first bevel put in, almost to the edge, so it's got all thinned out. Now I'm going to put another bevel here and work my way up and just keep going. So now I'm just going to keep going up. I won't bother to show that, but you get the idea. You just keep working all the way up until as far as you, you want. If you want to go up the whole blade, you could do that too. But uh, I'm going to work it up to about here. So I've been grinding away at this. This is looking pretty darn good. I'm quite happy with this. Um, nice and even. I haven't really made any mistakes with it. I'm going to keep working my way up and one more. And then once that is done, I'll blend it all with a, with a maybe a 120, maybe 80 grit belt, uh, and then take it up to maybe a 220, and then up to a 400, just to remove the grind lines on this, and then I'll sharpen it. It's hard to get the proper lighting on this, so it's hard to see, but uh, it does look pretty good. I'll maybe I'll snap a few photos and uh, append it.
So what I got here is the finished knife that I was working on, but this one here uh, I had originally started. This was an original blank. I messed it up, so I cut out a new one. Um, but I figured, eh, why not re-salvage this one? So what I did was I cut off the the bad grind. So this is gone now. I reheat treated this, and now I'm going to grind an edge back on it. So I just figured, I mentioned it that I did make a screw up on this. Um, so it's going to be a smaller kitchen knife, but I think it'll uh, it'll look pretty good when I'm done too. So I'm going to give that a try. All right, so I'm pretty much done grinding this extra blade. And this came out actually better than the original one. Now that I'm starting to get the hang of the grinding. So I stepped my way up through, started grinding a little bit all the way across, and then I stepped up all the way over until I worked my way up. So it's multiple steps to grind all the way up, and then I blended it. Now I'm going to grind it so that it has almost an edge, and then I'll put a micro bevel edge on it when I sharpen it on the water stone. So that's looking really nice, and I'm going to leave the fire scale on it because that'll look, uh, I think that looks pretty cool. And also prevent, uh, prevent rusting as well. All right, I got my primary grind in. It's looking really nice. Quite pleased with that. Nice and even. Better than the first two attempts I had. Much, much better. And again, this is going to be a right-handed knife. So the grind is on the right-hand side. Now, I've taken the edge all the way down and almost to to a point, or I should say the bevel, down to an edge. Taking it almost down so that it's sharp. Not quite, I'm gonna finish that. Put a micro bevel on this, or a secondary edge, using my Japanese whetstone. So I got a, a 1,000 and then a 4,000. So I'm going to hone this in, put an edge on it, and uh, make it the, add the handle to it. It'll be uh, a nice looking knife. So I'm going to wet the stone really nice. I'm going to start by putting a slight angle on this. I'm not sure exactly what this angle is. But I'm going to work the stone back and forth. There's other YouTube videos out there on how to do this so don't don't necessarily just go by what I'm doing here I'm still learning but uh, I've done this a few times but I couldn't tell you what exact angle this is Okay, now that I got a nice little bevel on it and a burr, there's a bit of a burr now on the back side, I'm going to work it lengthwise. Just a couple strokes.
And I just gotta work the back a little bit on the flat because there's a bit of a burr now. I'm going to grab a piece of cardboard to strope off a little bit of the burr and then we'll try cutting some cutting some paper with it. So I got a piece of cardboard here, a piece of newspaper for some test cutting. And I'm just going to strope off the burr. Cuts all the way through on most parts or all parts of the of the edge. So that's pretty respectable. Now I didn't spend a whole lot of time at this. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back at it, hit it some more, but I won't bother to show that on camera. But the same procedure and do that on the on the 4000 as well to get this thing scary sharp. This is the 4000 stone and I'm just honing in the edge of it you can you can hear the difference between this and the 1000 that this barely makes any sound when I'm stroking or moving the blade over it but you can see here I don't know if it'll show up on the camera but the the metal is coming off so it does wear away at the metal very quickly that's the beauty of Japanese water stones if you haven't used one they're just absolutely beautiful for sharpening knives on just going to apply a piece of tape here and then I have a stencil here of what I'm going to cut out for my logo so to cut this out I'm going to use a super sharp new exacto blade So I forgot to mention how I stuck this on. I just used a little spray glue and I printed off this logo on some really thin paper. Um, just paper. You could use regular paper, but I just pin printed it out on some thin paper and then stuck it on so that it wouldn't be as hard to cut through with the knife. So to etch the knife itself, it's really simple. There's all kinds of YouTube videos and how to's out there. Just Google it. Uh, but the basic premise is you need a power source connected to two wires, the positive wire connected to your blade, the negative wire connected to your alligator clip, and then to the alligator clip is a piece of cotton or paper towel dipped in some salt water, and then you apply the pad to the area that you want to etch, and it'll start removing the material. All right, I'm done the etching. I'm going to remove my stencil. I think that looks pretty darn good. Now I'm going to scrub at it to remove the oxidization. Okay, here it is all cleaned up. I got most of it clean. I might have to scrub at it a little bit more, but all I did was I stuck it in the sink with some water and scrubbed at it with a scouring pad just to remove that oxidization. But it's got an 
it's got a pretty good etch. You can hear it when I run my fingernail over it. There's definitely a nice ridge there. So it's all the way around. I'm quite pleased with that. That looks nice. Alright, the ultimate test is cutting a tomato. Cuts this all day long, not a problem. Even the soft parts here, not an issue. Typically it's the skin of the tomato that's the hardest to cut, this right here. Just like butter. 